Hey guys, we're here at the 2018 New York Auto Show thanks to you guys. And you can support us using the link below with our Patreon.com campaign. But behind me is the all new 2019 Cadillac XT4. This is Cadillac's first entry into the compact premium crossover segment. And I think it looks pretty cool, but this is everything you ever wanted to know about the new crossover. You know, it's an, that the segment is, is growing more than any other luxury segment right now. Um, we think we've come in at the right time with a vehicle that's not as small as the smallest entries. Um, it's kind of between. And what we've learned is talking to customers of the, the X1, the Q3, what they really wanted was something that was a little bit bigger. But since they were, those vehicles were designed in Europe, they're really designed for European customers. So this vehicle is just a little bit bigger to provide a little bit more space for the American and, and European and uh, Asian customer. Well, tell me about the chassis and the platform this rides on. So it's, it's really an all-new platform. It's a combination of other existing platforms. Once we started, we decided we really, there wasn't one that worked, so we combined different platforms. Um, you know, we've, the rear suspension is shared from the X-T5. The front suspension is uh, McPherson strut, which is you know, used on many different products. We've got a solid-mounted front cradle, which is really important for steering precision. Uh, but everything you know above the, the floor pan and uh, the floor pan is just all brand new for Cadillac. Under the hood is a two-liter turbocharged engine, and it's mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Of course, you can get this as an all-wheel drive crossover, and the rear wheels can decouple on the highway when the all-wheel drive system is not needed for more efficiency. Let's talk about what's under the hood. What are some of the tricks down, uh, yeah. down there? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have an all-new uh, two-liter turbo engine were the first usage. And, and our strategy here um, wasn't to go after advertised horsepower, the strategy was to go after a uh, really flat uh, torque curve. So it's 258 foot-pounds of torque, but what's, what's really important is that it's available from 1500 to 4000 RPM. So you put your foot on the, the pedal and you're immediately at the max uh, torque. And up to 5000 uh, RPMs, you get 97% of the max torque. Now you pair that with a nine-speed transmission, and it keeps you in that torque curve, the, the sweet spot of the torque curve the whole time. So it's a really, really good pairing um, to, to keep you right where you right where you need to be. And what is the power rating just on this? So it's 237 foot, uh, 237 horsepower. But as I mentioned, our strategy wasn't to go after advertised sure. horsepower. If you look at some of those vehicles that uh, have horsepower that's higher, their torque curve on a two-liter turbo tends to be narrower. And so we were going after drivability in a wide torque curve. Do you have fuel economy numbers available yet? Yep. So they're not, you know, they're not published. These are our targets, and so uh, we hope to achieve them. But we expect to be in the 25 city, 30 highway, and combine about 27. But we're still working that right now. And how about the all-wheel drive system? Yeah, it's a non-demand all-wheel drive system, and, and what we're doing here is uh, for fuel efficiency, you can actually disconnect the all-wheel drive system. So uh, if you're in a state or a, a region where you know winters only only comes part of the time. You can sure. actually physically disconnect the all-wheel drive system with the mode switch, okay. and then you're not transferring any residual torque, so you're not getting that drag, so you get full fuel economy and fuel efficiency. And then in the winter, or any time, you put it into all-wheel drive mode, and then you've got on-demand all-wheel drive. So it's just another way of improving fuel economy. Can you show me a little bit on the inside? Absolutely. Uh, so it's a, it, the first usage of a whole uh, new array of, of content for Cadillac. So new steering wheel, and this is a sport wheel, so it's got a nice thick uh, rim to hold on to. Um, uh, we've gone to a straight gate uh, electronic shifter, so there's no seven, it's a straight gate. Um, okay. A little bit more intuitive. Um, new clusters for Cadillac, we've got two new clusters, uh, and we've got a new uh, multi-function control, so rotary control that uh, our, okay. our uh, the folks who are coming from a, a German uh, competitor will be used to having. Okay, and infotainment system is updated or new? Yep, it's, uh, it's the, the Info 3 we call it. Uh, but what's new for Cadillac is we've gone, uh, we heard our customers talk and there was a demand to go back to mechanical interfaces. So we've added uh, mechanical buttons for the okay. HVAC, for the auxiliary, and then with the, the control as well to uh, interface with the infotainment system. One of the things about premium crossovers in this segment is the lack of rear seat space. I'm just about 6'2" and I can actually sit behind myself. This seat is almost all the way back and my knees are touching the seat, but actually it's doable in the back here. Yeah. 
obviously you've spent a lot of time we have this. we have it drives great so um, you know we're targeting a younger uh, audience than we've ever targeted before the 30 to 50 year old and uh, they expect uh, nimble quick handling so like I said the the solid mounted front cradle which is a challenge you do that and you've really got to have good uh, good good tuning to pull that off so you don't give away uh, any any ride um, but we needed that for the handling so it's it's precise it's nimble feels smaller than it is and it's a small vehicle but it uh, it handles like the smaller competitors all right well thanks a lot for absolutely your time. you're welcome thank you the new xt4 goes on sale in fall of this year and the starting price is just under thirty six thousand dollars which i think is pretty attractive for this particular model go back to tflcar.com for more news views and real world reviews and of course lots more from the 2018 new york auto show